Hey, and welcome back to Split Second Science. When Mexico gained independence from the Spaniards in 1822, it was in a position of civil war and economic chaos. The debt generated by the War of Independence was immense, and all the problems going on in modern Mexico can really be traced back to the beginning of its sovereignty over 195 years ago. In order to increase their population, the Mexican government announced that they would allow American settlers into Mexico. However, they had to meet various different conditions. They had to convert to Catholicism, get rid of their slaves, and pledge loyalty to Mexico. But almost all settlers were Protestant, had slaves, and were loyal to the U.S. government, which eventually led Mexico to close their borders in 1830, but it was already too late. The white population inside of the territory of Texas eventually outnumbered the Mexican population 2.5 to 1, with over 10,000 Americans competing with 4,000 Mexicans. This caused a revolution, and Texas gained independence in 1836. They twice asked the U.S. government to annex them, but they refused, now wanting to add another slave state to the Union, nor did they feel like provoking Mexico. Things really began to escalate after the election of 1844, when Democratic candidate James K. Polk was sworn in as the 11th president of the USA. Polk centered his campaign on an ideology that was very popular at the time, Manifest Destiny. Manifest Destiny was the idea that it was God's will for America to stretch its borders from the Atlantic to the Pacific. In late December of 1845, Congress voted to annex Texas and make it a 28th state in the Union. This action highly provoked the Mexican government, who saw this as a threat to their sovereignty. The U.S. government believed that the Rio Grande River, which marks the current border between Mexico and Texas, was the true border between the two. Mexico, however, argued that the Nueces River, which was farther north, marked the actual boundary between them. In an attempt to settle the dispute, Polk offered to buy Mexico's western territories for $30 million, the equivalent of around 650 to 700 million in today's money. Mexico refused, as they didn't want to sell half of their land to the U.S. By now, the countries were in a state of conflict, and there was no end in sight, as negotiations between the two were practically impossible. So, later in 1846, 2,300 American troops under General Zachary Taylor marched into the disputed region between Mexico and the U.S. The troops were ambushed by Mexican troops led by General Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana at Fort Texas, starting the first significant battle of the Mexican-American War. Unfortunately for the Americans, there were 900 more Mexican troops than American troops, but this was an irrelevant statistic, as the Americans were highly technologically superior and swiftly destroyed the Mexican advance. Fighting continued for another day during that battle, which saw the Mexicans in full retreat. Finally, on May 13th of 1846, after continuous demands from President Polk, Congress officially declared war on Mexico. Throughout the fall of 1846, various different battles took place in northern Mexico, with the Americans continually advancing southward. However, after the Battle of Buena Vista, Polk told Zachary Taylor to halt his military operations. The reason for this is that Taylor was a Whig, while Polk was a Democrat. Despite Taylor's success, Polk didn't want to risk him being a rival in the next presidential election. So, in early 1847, Polk replaces him with Democratic General Winfield Scott, who prepares for an invasion of central Mexico. The invasion of central Mexico started with the siege of Veracruz, a city on the eastern coast of central Mexico. The siege lasted 20 days, from March 9th to March 29th. After Veracruz was destroyed, the Americans went inland, and eventually came upon the gates of Mexico City on the 8th of September, 1847. The Mexicans attempted to defend Mexico City as best they could, but knew it was over after the Battle of Chapultepec on the 12th and 13th of December. Finally, on the 15th, after a week of clinging on, Mexico City was captured, ending the conflict stage of the war. The war officially ended on February 2nd of 1848 with the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo. In this treaty, Mexico agreed to cede half their land to the U.S. government in what became known as the Mexican Cession. It was also ruled that the Rio Grande was the border between Texas and Mexico. Furthermore, the U.S. would pay Mexico $15 million, 
or around 320 million to 350 million in today's money, in order to prevent themselves from having an unstable country on their southern border. The only change in the Mexican-American borders after this treaty was the Gadsden Purchase of 1853, and the border has been the same since. So, that seems like a good place to wrap up the video. If you have any science or history topics you'd like me to cover, leave them down below. This is Split Second Science, signing off.